All right, welcome everybody. So this week we're going to do a new segment, which I'm uh, preliminarily calling Review Revisit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to revisit a couple other reviews I've done in the past and kind of add a couple things I found out of after using things for a while. Because as we all as we all know, we find out things about certain tools that and sometimes it takes a while for them to come out. So the first thing I want to talk about is this torque wrench. So this is the Vera 7003C. This is a reprinted product that's actually made by Norbar Torque in the UK. Now this particular line of wrenches is, it looks like it's been discontinued. The Vera has removed it from its website and they've actually come out with a new line. And I don't really have a lot of information about that. I don't know if they're rolling their own or, they're, or they found another manufacturer, but they're definitely not Norbar torque wrenches. They definitely don't look like the Norbar, Norbar style. So if you want to get one of these green ones, you might as well do it before they run out. And I really don't know the reason why they stop uh, doing business with Norbar. I'm not really connected to the industry. So I don't know if it's the acquisition of Snap-on or some other factor that came into play while they stopped uh, licensing these to Vera. So the first thing is this case, at some point I uh, I must have dropped it or hit something with it because there's a big crack in it now. And I don't think this case really was ever intended to be permanent. But what I was finding is that I couldn't find even, I couldn't find a case for sale from Norbar to fit this torque wrench. They don't sell the cases separately. So after using this for a couple of times, the calibration certificate and the instructions that were in here have uh, since gotten lost. I have no idea where they where they went to. So if you ever do get these, I would recommend trying to get some kind of case. I think I'm going to try to buy maybe a, a Nanook or a Pelican case to store this in. In terms of using this, it's, it's worked pretty well. Um, I do have one minor complaint. So I was using this for a job and I had to tighten something to, I think it was like 79 foot-pounds. So I was up here and I was turning this and I was like, okay, there you go, I'm at 79. And obviously I'm not at 79 foot-pounds, I'm at about 78 newton meters. And I didn't catch it until I was almost done the job, so I had to go back and retorque everything. But the text there for the, for the units is so tiny, I could see how somebody could easily get these mixed up if you're used to looking at the top or the bottom on a different torque wrench. So probably if they would have you know, maybe made one of those a different color or something, or make or ba or maybe actually put you know newton meters right here on the plastic and then foot pounds down here. That's the first time I've ever experienced that with a torque wrench. Typically, they're they're pretty well labeled. A lot of times they put you know on one side they'll put foot pounds and on the other they'll put newton meters, just so it's very difficult to get them mixed up. But you can see there that the only difference is based, is this occasional text that rolls. When you actually get it into position, so we got like 100 newton meters right here, you lock it. When you turn to lock it, it kind of moves the, the setting a little bit. So now we're actually more like 98 newton meters. So I gotta, I gotta go back here, I gotta turn, unlock it. You gotta reset it, and you kind of have to hold this handle, then turn it, and even then, it's still got a little bit of play in there. Not really a big deal for the accuracy that this torque wrench is at. That probably makes no difference at all. So I, another thing that's annoying: I had two bolts in the same assembly. One had to be torqued to uh, 70, 79 foot-pounds. The other had to be torqued to 28. So obviously, I can't really technically use this for 25. I needed to go get another one. It is kind of annoying that it doesn't go down a little bit further than that, but I know there's reasons for that for accuracy. In order to get the in order to get accurate on the higher ends, you have to sacrifice some of the lower settings. I may actually look at getting maybe one of the, the newer style Vera torque wrenches. I need to do a little bit more research on those and I just really don't use them that much to justify needing a lot of torque wrenches, but it's definitely good to have one when you when you need it. So the next thing I want to talk about is these Philo 2 226 drivers. So 
I have a couple more and I somewhere they're not around here probably in a different toolbox so you can see this Phillips number three one I don't know if I've ever actually even used this one this one probably has never been used so as you can see the the text is still very readable here with the barcode and everything and these ones have gotten some uh, not I wouldn't say significant use but occasional use and you can see the Phillips number two has no writing left on it at all it's kind of surprising because I use these these wooden ones all the time probably more than these and there's still quite a bit of uh, text on on these ones so but not really a huge deal I just but I kind of like to have the actual part numbers on here in case you know I want to order another one or somebody asked me hey what's what's the part number for that screwdriver I kind of like that you, you can't tell from from these obviously you'd have to go look it up so possibly if they had laser arch something on the shaft it might have been a, a better solution than just silk screening it onto the handle but in terms of functionality the, the tips on these no problems at all they work just like all the other Philo ones so here's kind of a part correction when I did my review for this set I had incorrectly said that when it's in this position you can't actually put a socket on you have to move it and that's a that was incorrect that was a mistake on my part I don't know what I was thinking but basically there's a you can push this forward the switch forward which actually has there's a little plunger that pushes up and you can see it kind of pushing out there which allows you to put that on I had said you had to move it like this to do it so I know what you're thinking not not another L key video but um, I got an email from some guy uh, he works on uh, I think he said he works on the uh, oil platforms and he bought a set of these to use and he said that the this text right here was actually wearing off he sent me some pictures I guess you can kind of see that on the ones I'm using you can see how this is starting to fade away I'll have to do some some more tests to see what chemicals are actually would cause that to wear away is it just is it just from wear or is it a certain chemical or oil that's causing that to disappear because it if you feel it on the I like these ones that I've barely used like this two millimeter it kind of feels like it's stamped in there like it's not just uh, printed on there almost like it's burned in we may do a follow-up video in the future on these just on these sleeves what I basically told him is he could, he could try out the um, the stainless ones but I believe those are those are laser etched like sort of like how this one is and that gets into another subject about laser etching of tools I've had a couple of tools where I used them enough that the laser etching actually wore off and you couldn't even tell who made the tool anymore so I have the feeling if I were to use this tool quite a bit it's not one that I this is not this is not one that I use a lot as opposed to this Ghidorah which has everything stamped and you could probably use this for a hundred years and not wear through it enough to get rid of that stamping so that might be something we look at it in the future as well all right guys well it's going to wrap it up for this one hopefully you enjoyed that little follow-up insight on some of the tools i've been using that's it so i'll catch you guys next time